Recording in progress. All right, praise the Lord. Welcome everyone, both in the house here, online, and those listening in the future. Uh, before we do anything else, we want to make sure that God is the one in total control. So I just give it all to him. Heavenly Father, in the name of your glorious Son, Jesus Christ, Lord, I thank you for the privilege and honor of delivering your word. But I know if it's me and my flesh, it will have no power or anything else. Lord, it has to be your spirit that speaks through me and touches all of our hearts and minds, Lord. Uh, feed us with your word today. Let that word not return void, but accomplish what it's set out to do. Reveal yourself to us. Reveal who we are and what your, your will is for all of us so that we can be blessed and your name can be glorified. So I give this time to you and we give all our hearts to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, let's get into it then. Today's word. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 17 through 19 are our opening verses today. And it says, Now with whom was he angry forty years? Was it not with those who sinned? whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Amen? So at first we see at the very beginning it says those who sinned. And we start thinking about, oh, get it right, don't do the wrong thing because we're going to... We're going to fail God and all of that, right? That's the way our, our flesh tends to focus on that. But then we see the sin was not, it wasn't focused on the actions that they were taking. The sin was unbelief. Amen? We tend to sin because of unbelief. And so we're going we're gonna to look into this today because what we really need to enter the promised land, we're going to read that story what we need to enter that promised land of rest is actually faith, perfect faith, complete yeah. faith. Because once we have total faith in God, we can find rest for our souls. That's the key to entering God's rest. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm sure everyone has had some sense at one time or another of that peace that surpasses all understanding where you're not worried about a thing because you know God is in total control and you don't, you don't have any concerns. And you can feel it inside yourself. Amen? Yeah. Well, what if I told you that that's what God wants for us 24 hours a day? Anyone else beside me want to sign up for that? Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. So I pray that God will give us the revelation necessary to bring us into that place. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. We need complete faith. Faith is not a one-shot deal, a one aspect of our salvation or anything else there are parts of parts of our lives that we have total trust in god in and there are parts of our lives we may not amen so let's see if god shows us some things today to increase our faith we know that jesus wants us to have faith so that's a good start he wants us to have faith and who's the author and finisher of our faith not that robot it is Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Amen? Amen. Okay, you need to be quiet. All right. Now, those verses there, we're going to read in context of that chapter uh, so that we can see more about how they sinned by having unbelief. We go, we start, go back to verse 7 all the way to 19. This is the New Testament, and we're reading about what happened in the Old Testament. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart, hearts as in the rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness. Okay, before I go any further, we want to be able to hear God's voice. What do we do? Do we go outside and put our ear in the air? Where does he speak to us? In the heart. That's why it says, do not harden your hearts, as in the rebellion, because when we harden our heart, we can't hear from God. Our flesh takes over because we're not open. That's why love is so important. When we love, our hearts are open wide. Amen? Amen. 
But when we try to protect ourselves, it gets hard. Or for many other reasons, it gets hard. When we're at rest and all of that, we can hear God clearly. And he leads us and guides us. And we operate from the heart, not the brain or our strength. Amen? Amen. Where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works 40 years. We know the story, right? They were out there for 40 years because they didn't get it. And we're going we're gonna to read part of that. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart. In their heart. There it is again. And they have not known my ways. How do we trust God? To know God and know mm -hmm. his ways and not the ways of the world. Amen? Yeah. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief but in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened, hardened heart again through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. What's the beginning of our confidence? The day that we were broken and we said, I, I, I need help. I'm, I'm broken. I have no way to save myself. We are uh, circumcised in the heart. We cried out to God. We asked for him to save us. And he did. And we knew we were saved. That yeah. faith is what we need to carry all the way. Amen? Mm -hmm. That wasn't a one-time deal. And we're going to talk more about that as we go through this. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So if we hold beginning of our confidence... We had all confidence in him when we couldn't help ourselves. May we always have that. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Again, you see that. For who having heard rebelled. Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Amen. Amen. All right. So I've, I've definitely hit on that quite a few times there. Now, we're, he was referencing a story in the Old Testament. And again, we may have seen and read this story before, but I pray that God makes us open to see new revelation about all of these things. Amen? Because we know, if you've been in the Word long enough, you can read the same scripture over and over, and each time you get a whole new revelation. Amen? Amen. So Lord, help Amen. us be open. So we're going to pick it up in Numbers chapter 13. Uh, to make it short, I just, including relevant verses for what we're talking about. Verses 1 and 2. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, so they had just gotten out of Egypt and they were passing through the wilderness and they had a few little trials and stuff. They went across the wilderness. Now they're at the promise of the border of the promised land. This is where they are now. And God says, send men to spy out the land which, which I am giving to the children of Israel. Now he said, I'm giving it to them. From each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, everyone a leader among them. Amen? Amen. So he said, I am giving it to them. He didn't say, well, hopefully you can make it. He didn't say, uh, if you're good enough. He said, I'm giving it to them. That's important to remember. Jump to verse 17 through 33. Then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains and see what the land is like, whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor. Now you think God knows this already? Then yeah. it must be letting them see things and seeing how they react. Amen? And whether there are forests or not, be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rehob near the entrance of Hamath. 
And they went up through the south and came to Hebron, Ahiman, Shesai, and Talmai, the descendants of Anak, or Anak, I don't know how it's pronounced, Anak, were there. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zawan in Egypt, okay? Then they came to the valley of Eshkol, and there cut down a branch, one branch, with one cluster of grapes. Then they carried it between the two of them on a pole. That's Just how one massive cluster. one cluster of grapes is. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. The place was called the Valley of Eshkol because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there. And they returned from spying out the land after 40 days. 40 is a time of trial and testing. That's exactly what God was doing with them. Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. There it is. Uh -huh. Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Well, for us, we're not. it's not talking about fruit. We had some wonderful fruit today uh -huh. from my honey. Yeah, putting it together, but what is it to us? We're spiritual Israel. Our promised land is rest, which means when we come into that place of rest in the Lord, spiritual fruit, the fruit of the spirit of love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, patience, and self-control, goodness, all those things that we long for is what is in abundance in the promised land of rest. Amen? Amen. Are we okay? Amen. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Those were the giants. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. Amen? But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. What? And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. So, well, we're going to talk about those giants in a moment. But God had already promised the Israelites he was going to give it. We already saw it in one place, and we see it in Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. The Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt before, before God even called us. Mm -hmm. When we were broken in bondage by the, by the ruler of this world, he saw us there. And we were in bondage and he heard our cry because of their taskmasters, the works of darkness. And for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them like he delivered us out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land. Amen? Amen. To a land flowing with milk and honey to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Amen? A spiritual place of rest. Praise the Lord. For them, it was that place with big grapes and all that fruit. For us, it's this spiritual place of rest in the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. So God promised them from the time they cried out to him, before he even delivered them, he already had a plan to bring them there. So God, before you ever cried out to God, God already had a promised land of rest for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. And before I get too far ahead, I know everybody promises paradise. When we leave this earth and all that, it's going to be everything we always wanted. No more sorrow and no more pain, no more suffering, no more all those things. But I'm here to once again remind you that this is bigger than that. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, so God promised them, and yet 
we go back to what happened. Now, the, uh, they, they had looked and they came back with that bad report. We pick it up in Numbers 14, verses 1 through 11. So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness. Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. Amen? What does that mean for us? Huh? Maybe, maybe we, God calls us and then we, we start to follow God, but then it gets a little difficult. Or we see things that in ourselves or situations in our lives that are too big. And, and oh, you know, this, this was nice, but it's just too hard. Maybe the persecution is too much or whatever the case. And so go back to the ways of the world. Or maybe even in the house of God, bring the world into the house of God to make it more palatable for people. Amen? Mm. Are we okay with that? Mm. Let it not be okay with us, though. Amen? Praise the Lord. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all of us, the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh who were among those who had spied out the lands, tore their clothes. They were, they were just, they had faith. <clears throat> and they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we passed through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. Again, I said, you've probably experienced it somewhere in your walk. This place of pure paradise and rest and no, not a care in the world. Amen? Am, am I the only one that has Amen. a to that? Okay, I want to make sure. Okay. If the Lord delights in us, does he? We just Amen. heard our songs today. He loves us, right? Amen. Then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. In other words, we can eat them for lunch. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. And all the congregation said to, to stone them with stones. Now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of meeting before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, How long will this people reject me? And how long will they not believe me with all the signs which I have performed among them? Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. Now, I, we have to go through that and look at that story because we have to see ourselves in this story. If we can remember back to the time when we were in bondage to the ruler of this world and we had no way to get out of it. We were struggling with addictions. We were struggling with sin or whatever and we knew that we needed help and we surrendered and God made it real our salvation became real we knew we now had spiritual eyes to see and ears to hear we knew that we had the spirit of God all these wonderful things that we could have never done on our own strength amen and now is there any limitation to what God can do in our lives our flesh may tell us, or the devil may tell us, yes, there is, and we should be afraid, and we certainly can't do it, and all that, but that's not the truth. The truth is, believe him. He who started it, he did, he's going to do it all. Amen? Amen. All right, before I get too far ahead of myself, it's important to enter his, his rest. That's extremely important to God. Why do I say that? Because in Hebrews 4, right after our opening chapter, verses 1 through 11, it says, therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, that's our promised land. Mm -hmm. That's the place with milk and honey and everything else. Let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Just because... They, they saw and all that and they heard God, but they didn't believe God that he could actually do it. He destroyed the Egyptian army and everything else and they were afraid of what the people were going to do in the promised land. For we who have believed do enter that rest. Belief is what brings us into rest. Uh -huh. 
And he has said, so I swore in my wrath they shall not wrath they shall not enter my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Amen. He has written the book. He knows the beginning from the end. It's all there. Now we either go along with God and become a part of that story or not believe him and we don't want to be like those the ones who died in the wilderness, mm -hmm. right? For he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this place, they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience or unbelief, again he designates a certain day, saying in David, Today, after such a long time, as it has been said, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to get into this. We're going to go we'll dig deep. For if Joshua had given them rest, rest, he would not have afterward had spoken of another day. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. This is important. There remains a rest for the people of God. If you are a child of God, God has a rest for you, a promised land for you. For he who has entered his rest has himself, this is the key, also ceased from his works as God did from his. Amen? Amen. All right. That's important. When we're resting, we're not doing anything, Amen. right? We're just being led by the Spirit. God is the head, and we are his hands and feet. We're no longer trying to control things. And that is where we find rest. What do we need to be able to let go? Is faith. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. Yes. Amen? Amen? Are you with me? I know it's a lot of scripture, Amen. but it's important for us to have the picture here of what God is trying to tell us today. What I believe he's telling us. Okay, so now we got it. We got this promised land, except it's not a physical place with giants over there. It's a place in ourself that brings us into this place of total rest, peace, joy, and all the wonderful fruit of the Spirit that we all want to bear. We want to have that fruit in us. We want to be at rest. We want that peace and all that. And yet we, we may look and say, you know, I'm not sure if this is going to happen. I'm not sure if this is going to happen in my life. I'm not sure God's going to bring me into that place where I can experience that while I'm here on this earth. Well, let's, we're going to just look at a handful of giants that we may see in ourselves or situations that may keep us from being at rest. Okay? Okay. Amen. All right. May we all see ourselves in these. First of all, we have our flesh to deal with. Amen? Amen. And the longer you walk, walk with God, the longer you realize that our flesh, the old man or woman in us, say, is this. Romans 7, verse 18, Paul the Apostle says, For I know that in me that is in my flesh nothing good dwells. For to will is present, present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. Amen? So that's why I believe, you know, people say, well, you've got flesh, and so you can never be sinless. You cannot, you, you can't walk without failing God some way and so forth like that. So this could be our giant. We could see this and say, you know, I, I've got anger issues. Uh, I've got all kinds of different things that I see in myself that I don't want. The things I want to do, those things I don't do, and the things I don't want to do, those things I do. Rich and man that I am, who can save me from this body of death? Well, Jesus can. Amen? Amen. And so we see our flesh, and we could say, man, I can't wait to get out of here and leave this flesh behind. Oh. But what if God actually has that promised land for you now? Amen? Here's an Old Testament encouragement for all of you. Exodus 17, verses 8 through 11. Now Amalek came and fought with Israel and Rephidim. And I know that the people in this room are familiar with this, or most, uh, maybe all of us. But there might be people listening online. And, and I believe God is referring when he tells us about Amalek, he's talking about our flesh. 
the first enemy that the Israelites faced when they were delivered from Egypt and went to the promised land, oh no, the wilderness, sorry, the first enemy they faced was Amalek. And usually what happens is after God delivers us and saves us and we have this wonderful born again experience, a little bit of time goes by and the first thing we realize is that the old man is still there. A lot of our old personality, our old uh, habits and things that are against God, oh no, they're still there. And then we try not to sin. No, 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 I'm not going to sin this time. That's Amalek. Our flesh rising up against our new spiritual self. Amen? Amen. But see, now this word is to tell you that God's got this. Amalek came and fought with Israel and Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, choose us some men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. <coughs> right here you can see Joshua fighting on his own was not going to win. Mm -hmm. Right? We trying to fight our flesh, or we're not going to win. Moses is a type of Christ. Jesus lives to make intercession for us, just like Moses on top of that mountain. When he lifted up the rod and said, Father, forgive them, help them, give him victory. When others, we go and we get prayer, and we get people praying like all of them, praying for us, God moves and God gets the victory over our flesh. Amen? Amen. God's promise is, Later in that very chapter, verse 14, the Lord said to Moses, write this from a memorial in the book and recount it in the hearing of Joshua, that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Amen? That's our flesh. God will always, always fight our flesh from generation to generation. It's his battle, not ours. Amen? Amen. You've been redeemed from the law. You've been redeemed from all that. Yes, we, we, our, we will see our flesh will rise up and we will stumble and then we confess and he cleans us up as he teaches us to walk. Amen? Like little children, we're going to fall. And we're going to fall and he says, okay, just tell them, come on, I'm going to wipe you off and I'm going to let you try again. I'm going to teach you to trust me. I'm going to teach you to do all of that stuff. So sin is no longer about condemnation. That's what happens when we're not in Christ. But no, God will deal with the flesh. He's going to deal with every part. Maybe it's not today. Maybe we see a part of ourselves, some, some trait of ourselves we wish God would deal with right now. But maybe he's more interested in dealing with something else in our heart that we're, we don't even see yet. Or dealing with unforgiveness or reconciliation or whatever else. And yet we still, uh, I don't know, addicted to smoking or something like that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, God knows what he's doing. He's going to defeat that flesh if we believe him. Amen? Amen. Lord, help our unbelief. All right. And that kind of goes right into this, what I was talking about. And I put addictions and curses because there are things in our lives that we had nothing to do with in the first place. Amen? And, and I'm going to prove that to you in Scripture. Amen? We are born with some character traits. It doesn't even make sense, but they're in us. Amen? Mm -hmm. So when, we're, when we see these things, we could say, well, God, you know, I, I, I know you have a place of rest, but this... I, I can't shake this addiction. I don't know what's going on with me. And I may not have the faith that you're going to beat this thing because it's been going on for so long. Look what the word says in Numbers 14, verse 18. The, law, the Lord is long-suffering and abundant in mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, but he by no means clears the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation. Amen? That is what's called a generational curse. Mm -hmm. And so we may have traits in ourselves. We don't understand why it's there, but it turns out that our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents, somebody along the line fell and opened the door for the enemy to come in and, and has this now sin character trait, and that's a curse on them, and it's carried all the way down to us. 
Have you ever heard of a family of generations of alcoholics or drug addicts? Mm. You wonder why? Well, because that's a generational curse, brothers and sisters. Mm. And now we are either going to believe that God can break that curse or we don't. If we want to enter the rest, we got to believe that God's going to bring us there. He's going to deliver us from those things. Mm. And guess what? He does. I, I can tell you for a fact, many people in this room and Many others have already been blessed by seeing their gener generational curses broken by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And this is how it's broken. Leviticus chapter 26 verses 40 through 42. But if they confess, confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers. We have a whole process we go through. And, and basically we confess our own, what we see in ourselves and what our parents and our grandparents and our great grandparents did. If we confess that with their unfaithfulness in which they were unfaithful to me and that they have also walked contrary to me and that I also have walked contrary to them and brought them into the land of their enemies. If their uncircumcised hearts are humbled and they accept their guilt then I will remember my covenant with Jacob and my covenant with Isaac and my covenant with Abraham. And I will remember, I will remember the land and heal you. Amen? Amen. Don't let anyone try to convince you that you cannot get delivered from all this kind of stuff. Even generational curses or any other thing like that. Soul <coughs> ties, all those things. God has been doing a great work and setting us all free from those things. Amen? Amen. Are we okay? Are we seeing these giants? Amen? That may keep us from just being able to totally rest because we're worried that our, our flesh will rise up or our addictions are never going to go away. God will do it in His timing. Amen. Here's a big one. A big giant in our walk and in our ability to enter His rest, to trust God with everything, is fear of man. Amen? Amen. A character very popular in the Old Testament that had the fear of man and it just gave him all kinds of trouble was King Saul. In 1 Samuel 15 verse 24, Saul was supposed to follow Samuel's advice and kill everybody in this town and all the animals, everything else. And, and uh, Samuel comes over and says, you didn't do it right and so forth. And what Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm from my own personal experience, I remember one time I was at work. In my workplace, you can't have, you can't be doing uh, spiritual things in the workplace. Mm -hmm. It's a big no-no. God tells me to go down to the, uh, uh, the general's, uh, office area right where all the executives are and they're all walking around and the guy at the desk there God wants me to pray for him <laughs> and so I'm trying to follow the Holy Spirit and I go down there and and uh, I walk up to him and I grab his hand but I see all the executives walking around and I couldn't I couldn't bring myself to do it because I was too afraid and I didn't accomplish what God wanted me to do because of the fear of man was I at rest? No, I wasn't because I was too worried about what people were going to say in those days. Amen? There's no condemnation. God's teaching us. Amen? I may not be the only one who's failed one of God's instructions. And uh, I'm not condemned because the Word tells me I'm not. Amen? I learned lessons. I re God revealed to me that I had the fear of man. Amen? So Saul, he definitely feared people and, and followed what they said instead of what God wanted. And it was so bad that in just a few more verses, after realizing that, he says again in verse 30, I said, I have sinned, yet honor me now, please, before the elders of my people and before Israel. So he's still worried about the opinion of his people and instead of really worried about God. And he says, return with me that I may worship the Lord your God. Amen? He is more concerned about his image and what people have to say than actually worrying about God and in what God wants. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so, again, if God reveals that to us, it's not anything but for us to see it and ask him to give us the faith to do his will even in the midst of persecution, even in the midst we could be fired or whatever else because it's totally up to God. And if God wanted me in the job and I prayed and they all looked at me funny or called me in a room, unless he wanted me to leave the job, I was not going to leave. 
but I didn't have the faith. And that's why it happened. Amen? We may be in situations where we're more worried about what people think or feel, and we could not enter his rest because we're trying to, mm -hmm. to, to save ourselves. Amen? Proverbs 29, verse 25 says, The fear of man brings a snare. A snare is a trap. When you're trapping an animal, you set a snare. But whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Are we okay? We got yeah. three giants already. Yeah. Okay, this is a big one. And, you know, a lot of this, this subject came up because it seems to be right now, uh, Pastor Tyrone and I seem to be ministering in this area of, of these topics right here. And we can, God is revealing that it's about trusting Him and, and then all these burdens and these these stresses can go away if we would just give it to God. So relationships means, in this case, there's, there's enough to worry about in our own flesh, in our own habits, in our own things, but then we may have people close to us and we, we want them to behave a certain way, or even in our workplace or everyone else. We're, I'm okay, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about this person right there. And so we either want to change them, we want to do something about it, and that's not being at rest. We're not at that place of total rest there. So if we want to see people change, we got to have faith in God, not ourselves. Amen? Amen. First, we got to realize, as it says in Proverbs 21, verse 1, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Like the rivers of water, he turns it wherever he wishes. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. And so the truth is, if we want to see people change, it is never, never going to be because we judge them and tell them how they're going to behave. It doesn't work that way. All that does is build walls and, and bring distance. Amen? But if we believe that not only kings, but everybody, God can guide their heart and make them turn, then all we need to do is pray for people who persecute us, pray for our loved ones, pray for their salvation, pray for all those things because the only one who can make it right is God and not us. Amen. And then we can find rest for our souls. Amen? Amen? But what do we need? Faith to believe that God will do it. Amen? Amen. We are his children and he listens to his children. And he want, if we're praying for something that's God's will, that's, you know, good things, then God will do it. Because he's our father and he loves Amen. us. Amen. If we Amen. being evil know how to give, give good gifts to our children, how much more will he do that in good things? Amen. Amen. So it's not just kings. Anybody we care about or even don't care about, pray for them and let God work in them because God's work is perfect. Praise the Lord. All right. Now, I want to show you an Old Testament example of this very thing. It's not a king here. But it's a way, a, a demonstration of incredible faith in God right here. Genesis chapter 13, verses 5 through 9. We know this, most of us know this story very well. Lot also went with Abram and had flocks and herds and tents. Now the land was not able to support them that they might dwell together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's flock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. Oh, livestock, livestock. The Canaanites and the Perizzites that dwelt, then dwelt in the land. So Abram said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between you and me, and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brethren. Is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you take, go to the right, then I will go to the left. What is Abram doing here? Is he just being a, uh, uh, letting somebody run all over him, being weak-minded? Or is he acting in faith? Does he understand that God will guide Lot to where God wants him? Amen? Amen. And look at the result. By not telling Lot where to go, he had every right to say, okay, well, you go that way. He is the, the head of... Lot came with him. He could have done all those things. He could have been in control, but he let God be in control. And so he said, Lot, you decide, because I know, God, you're going to get, you're going to put him in the right place. You're going to put me in the right place. So Lot chose Sodom. 
right? We know that. He went to the green grass outside of Sodom and ended up getting swallowed up by Sodom. But then look what happens when God did, when Abram did that very thing. Now we look in verses 14 through 17. The Lord said to Abram after making that, that uh, step of faith, he said to Abram after Lot had separated from him, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Amen? Amen. What did he do to deserve that? He trusted God. Amen? He rested in the Lord. And because he didn't take any action, he let God decide he was blessed with the promised land of rest. Amen? Are we okay with that? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Another giant in our land. And that is we live on this earth and we have to eat. We need a place to live. We got to have clothes to wear. We need a job. And we have all kinds of things going on, right? And, and we're, we, we know we got to live here. And so can we be at rest when we're struggling with these things? When we're trying to make things happen? I don't think we can. I think God has the answer. First of all, Matthew 6, verses 20 through, 24 through, through 34. Jesus said, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, or materialism, or money. In other words, if you're either going to have God be your God, or money be your God. And we may say, okay, well, I'm not into like having a yacht and a, my own private plane, but I got to eat. I need those things. If we're trusting in those things, then we're not trusting in God. And nobody here, I, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm perfect in this or anything else. I believe God is telling us today that we can choose God and he's going to take care of us. Amen? Amen? Jesus said, therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you will put on, where you're going to live, how you're going to get around, all those things. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather in the barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Amen? If we actually believe that God is so involved in every little aspect of our lives, and we realize that he already, you know, the, the, the birds and those, the, the, those animals eating our persimmons over there. Mm, squirrels. Right? The squirrels, the birds, they're being fed and they're not doing any work for it except to go eat it. Mm -hmm. All right? So God sees us way more valuable. We're his children. We're made in his image. He knows what we need. Amen? Amen. Which of you by worrying can add one cubit, foot and a half, whatever, inch to your stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory, and he was rich, was not arrayed like one of these. If you look into a lily, it's just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. God's amazing creation. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? There it is. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? How am I going to pay the rent or the mortgage or my car payment? Or how am I going to put food on the table? How is all this going to happen? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, all people need those same things. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness all these things shall be added to you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I got, I got to testify right here. This house we're living in right now, we were pursuing God, and, and we were doing God's will. We were renting, and we were, I was just focused on just learning who God is and serving Him. And on my wife's birthday, we were blessed with this home that I didn't think we could possibly qualify for. Mm -hmm. And... And it was, it was all God's work, 
but it, but but it wasn't it wasn't my strategy my ability to go and make it all happen it was just God God provided us in ways that just don't make any sense to me yeah. but it works praise the Lord yeah. therefore do not worry about tomorrow oh well we got this coming up I got that coming up for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble, and that doesn't mean we need to worry about what's happening today. And we need we just walk with God, rest in Him, and let Him take care of it all. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So contrary to our nature, our flesh, this world, right? We have these false quotes of God helps those who help themselves and all that stuff. No, God is telling us, you are a little child sit at my feet listen to my voice i got the rent covered i got everything i got the food i got all of that stuff praise the lord that's faith we need faith amen praise the lord now we may not see this giant in ourselves but we do have a struggle with pride amen uh i definitely do and so that can be a giant we can see that and then we think it's gone, and then we see it again, and we think, oh man, is God ever going to deliver me of this? Am I always going to be trusting in myself and my ability? Look at Job. Job chapter 29, verses 12 through 16. Just a little snippet of his rant. Because I delivered the poor. This is Job talking. I delivered the poor who cried out, the fatherless and the one who had no helper. The blessing of a perishing man came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. My justice was like a robe and a turban. I was eyes to the blind, and feet to the la- I was feet to the lame. I was a father to the poor, and I searched out the case that I did not know. So, in this case, he's doing a lot of ministering. He's being a- helpful to people. When God, before God ever called me, my focus was always about how can I help people and do things. And so I had this tons of pride thinking that I was a good person. People were telling me that. And I had the right heart. All that stuff, it was filthy rags is what it was. Mm-hmm. But that's pride in thinking that we can take God's place. Amen? Amen. Or it's our ability to do anything, right? Or, or whatever it is. We may be good at certain things, and yet it's God who gives us that blessing. And God can turn off that switch whenever he sees fit. Amen? Amen. It's all God. But pride is a huge giant that we could see in ourselves and think, Oh man, will I ever be delivered from this? But we see Job gets delivered from it. At chapter 42, verses 1 through 6. Then Job answered the Lord after all he went through and said, I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be held from withheld from you. You ask, who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? There I, for I have uttered what I did not understand. Things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Listen, please, and let me speak. You said I will question you and you shall answer me. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Amen? Amen? God will deliver us in any pride that we have. Once he reveals it to us, we confess it, we see it, we get prayer, and through everything we're going to go through, just like Job, just like uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, he knows how to bring us to that place of humility. Amen. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Amen? Amen. He is going to do that. Praise the Lord. And finally, the last giant that I want to mention today is tradition. Because I can't tell you how many times I've heard some form of this statement. You can't be sinless while you're still in this body. You can look forward to that when you're gone. But as long as you got in this body here and you're on this earth, you're going to fail God. You're going to do all that. Just You can confess and all that. You can be cleansed. But you can't be sanctified, right? I don't know about you, but I heard this all the time. It sounds a lot to me like the giants are too big in the promised land, and there's no way we can get in there, doesn't it? It sounds like that to me. Like there's no way God can actually do all this work in us while we're here. 
The same God who created Adam from the dust of the ground, who brings people back to life from the dead, and we think that he can't actually finish the work he started in us? That's tradition. And if we, if we hold on to tradition, there's no faith in that. Or we're, we're trusting in that tradition instead of trusting in God. And what does God say? God's word tells us this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you partially? Completely. completely. That's what it says. May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He who calls you is faithful who also do it. Right? Amen. It says it right there. And guess what? It says it in the Old Testament too. This is what God spoke to me during the worship. For I, this is God speaking, not me. For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land, promised land of rest. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit with you within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you will keep my judgments and do them. Does he say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch you and make sure you get it right? No, he says, I'm going to do all of this. <clears throat> Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Amen? Amen. Promise after promise, including the next one. Being com Philippians 1 6, being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you, he took you out of Egypt, he will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. What does it take for us to get to the promised land? Faith. Amen. Complete faith in Him in our relationships, in our, our own issues that we have in our life, in, in His promises, all of that, all these other things can go by the wayside, and He will bring us to that place of permanent rest because we trust Him with everything, ourselves, our loved ones, our finances, our health, everything. Amen? Amen. Are we okay with that? Praise the Lord. A few other things and we'll wrap it up. So then we can then rest from trying to make everything happen. Because that's our nature. We're always trying to get make things happen. We think we know what's right. Or we think that maybe God's a little too busy to worry about this. Or we just don't have the faith. But we can. And so we try to do things. And that we, what we do is stop abiding in Him. Trusting in Him. Romans 4, verses 1 through 4. What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Amen. We saw an example of that today, right? With Lot. It was a... It was a total act of faith by letting God, be God, God move Lot to do whatever Lot needed to do. Amen. But Abraham believed him. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. So what are works? This is not just about religious activity. Anytime we are trying to save our finances, change people, try to fix ourselves, guess what? That's our own works. That's denying the one who said he would do it. Mm -hmm. Amen? That's our works, and that's death. That's not blessed, that's death. Because we're trying to be God of our lives. God understands that we lived all of our lives up to the time he called us. That was all we knew, was to make our way. But that is not what God wants for us. Amen? Amen. Exodus, Exodus, and it, it goes all the way back. The Israelites were in Egypt. They just cried out and God took them out of Egypt, brought them through the Red Sea, brought them into the, promise, uh, the, the wilderness. They complained and God didn't even get mad. 
He just, they wanted water, he gave them water. They wanted food, he gave them food. He just did everything that they asked for because they're his children. But then something happened and everything changed. Exodus 19, verses, verse 8, first half. Then all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And after that, 3,000 people perished. And death and destruction and all of that, God's anger on his people. What changed? The fact that the people decided now they could do it. So every time we want to fix things, we're saying the same thing to God. And we're going to struggle until we learn that we got to let God do it all. And then we are blessed because we find rest and peace and joy and all those things. And then people will see God in us because his love will just come out of us because we're not building walls. We're not trying to control situations. Mm -hmm. We can let go. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Yeah. God just wants us to trust in him. That's what this is all about. From the beginning to the end. Jeremiah 29. God says to you today, verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, all of you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. You will not go without. You will always be taken care of. Just trust mm -hmm. me. That's all he wants us to do. Amen? Amen. Nahum chapter 1, verse 7. This is one of my new favorite verses. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows those who trust in him. Amen? Amen? That's what we want to hear, right? That he knows us because we trust in him. We will face trouble. And that's the test. Are we going to take action or are we going to rest and let him do it? Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, I pray that, that this has blessed you. Now, we all know that we can't manufacture this faith. We hear God telling us we need the faith. I'm not there. Anytime I argue, anytime I try to take matters into my own hand, I'm turning from God and saying, I need to handle this. So I need this. I need what God is showing us today. John 15, verse 5, Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me, what does that mean? Trust in me. Amen. Yes, amen. Psalm 91, those who hide under the shadow of the Almighty, right? Under his wings. That's where we trust in him. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. All of our own efforts are filthy rags. All of our trying to fix ourselves, trying to fix other people, hanging on to tradition, whatever it is, those things are keeping us from resting in him and letting him do it all. Amen? Amen? But if we do a trust in Him, we're going to bear the fruit of love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, and all those good the Lord. things. Amen? Amen? Hebrews 11, verse 6, But without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, and He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. In other words, I used to think as... I had to, when I see this verse, I had to study more and all that, seeking him. But the truth is, I got a problem and I go to you, God. Uh, I got this issue, I go to you, God. This is all you. I'm seeking you to handle the issue. Amen? Amen. And that's what pleases God. We see it right here, right? We want to please God. Trust in him. Amen? Amen. And finally, Matthew 11, 28, Jesus says to all of us, Come to me, all you who labor, as it works, and are heavy laden with burdens, and I will give you that rest. Amen? Amen. Amen. How many the people Lord. want to go to the promised land? Amen. Now. Amen. Now in this life. Amen? Amen. Yes. Amen. Okay. Yes. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> well, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word today. And we hear you, Lord, but there is absolutely no way that we can manufacture that kind of faith. It's so rare to even see. I mean, we see Abraham. He really had tremendous faith. But you gave Abraham that faith. It wasn't his righteousness. It was your righteousness. He believed you, and that's why he was accounted as righteous. And so we need Abrahamic faith. We need perfect faith, complete faith, because we want to be in that promised land of rest that you have for us. And give us the faith to believe that you, who started that work in us, will bring us all the way into that promised land. Now, in this life, 
You created Adam from the dust of the earth. You made part of the Red Sea. You did wonderful works in our lives. And there's no limit to what you can do. You can create and recreate. You can do all those things. So search our hearts and find any iniquity, any unbelief in us. Reveal it to us. And then we know once we see it, when we give it to you, you will take that out and you will replace it with faith because you are the author and finisher of our faith. We ask you to help our unbelief until we have none and we have total rest in you in all things. Thank you for this word today. We give you all glory, honor, and praises in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. For everyone here, for everyone online, and those who will listen in the future, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you all peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Amen. 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 Praise God.